obviously it's it gets very complicated. I want to first just talk about what well, I want to first just say you buy a stock when you want to. That's basically the answer. If I think Tesla is at a good value right now, I'm just going to buy Tesla. If you think the company is going to be worth more than it is right now or whatever, you just buy the stock, right? Now, obviously that's it's a very easy concept to understand. However, there's obviously like things that like what should one stop process be when they're going to execute a trade or investment and i guess it, it is a little more complicated but in essence every decision to buy a company comes down to i think this is valuable and i'm going to buy it because i think it will appreciate in value let's first discuss the investing ways to buy a stock or a company let's go to something like pepsi i i own pepsi right now now the there are basically I guess three ways you can really invest and make an educated decision when buying a company. First is I know that Pepsi. I know Pepsi is a good company. I want to add more to my position. When I invest in a company, I make sure this is long term, like ten year plus. I want to make sure they have a dividend. I know you shouldn't buy companies based off of dividends. However, this is a reason to buy a company. Again, I want to make sure everything I'm saying in this video is not. It's not advice for you, it's just for me, and I'm giving examples in the current moment, so don't take this as specific advice, I'm just giving examples. Also, there are endless ways to buy and reasons to, to buy a stock. I'm giving you my reasons, because I can speak from experience. Pepsi right now, the dividend's about 3%. That's not amazing, but for Pepsi, it's pretty good. This market is still pretty overvalued. I think Pepsi is just a very good buy and that's one reason why I'm doing it is because I already went over the fundamentals of the company. I noticed the future prospects or outlook is pretty decent. So I'm putting money in it and I know I have a specific return that the dividend will most likely never, not never be cut, but in the short term not be cut. My money is safe, yielding about 3% with potential appreciation. That is my thought process for buying something like Pepsi. So that's one way is basically buy knowing before you look at the dividend or whatever, you notice that the company is solid, it has a good dividend, or the price to dividend ratio, you know, it's a good yield. That's kind of one way. The next way is the dollar cost average. I don't know if Pepsi right now is really overvalued. I don't know. I can look I can look at the BE. I can look at like the market, like what other things are relative to it. But at the end of the day, I don't know if this is overvalued at 137, you know, 140. I mean, you can look at charts, you can do other stuff, but at the same time, you never know because again, look at like Apple. You could say it was overvalued in 2020, February, at 80 bucks. It, you could have lost 30%, and then you could have still like made 50% if you never if you just hold it. You never really know when the market is overvalued, undervalued, and when corrections might happen. Basically, I'm just doing a very long summary of how to dollar cost average. I don't. Maybe I pick a day. Maybe every Friday, every two weeks, on Friday, I just buy shares of Pepsi, you know, something like that, always just not time the market, but just pick it, you're investing, you like the company, you think it's solid, you can look at the PE and stuff too, but it gets kind of weird and complicated, right now earnings are kind of weird, if you can look at whatever metric you want, but to me, I know Pepsi is a good company, I like it, the dividend yield right now is alright, I'm putting money in it because it aligns with my investing principles, I guess honestly those are the only two ways I really, so I guess when you like, yeah I guess that is it, those are the two ways from when I invest, when I'm like, when am I actually going to buy a company for the sake of buying, and it is the dividend yield, and the solid company, and then you just dollar cost average, so some things too, like General Mills is another great company I like, I think it's, it's just solid, no, it's like when you decide, do I want more General Mills or more Pepsi on certain days or whatever, Again, you're just kind of keeping a, within your portfolio, like, percentages in each company. You want to keep them relatively equal, unless if you have stronger urges that certain companies will outperform, then that's when you can uh, allocate more money, basically, to an individual company. But at the end of the day, you basically want a dollar cost average, make sure you're getting a decent dividend, or you can justify the dividend growth maybe on like a five year, three year time frame, or uh, is it KGR, what is it called, year over year dividend growth, and then justify that based on the price, you can, you know, look look like one or 
two or three years out this price you're paying in advance for a future dividend. That's another way you can do it. Let's talk about trading. A trade I have on right now, this is even more complicated. Investing is a lot easier to decide when buying a company because it's like, hey, this company's good. I think it has valuable. And you know what? There I go. Dollar cost average for X amount of months. Gain a relative, you know, position in the thing. And yeah, keep adding to it when you get money. Trading, though, it's a lot more complicated because there's more decisions to be made. This is my most recent trade, Win Resorts. I don't think it's a great trade, not a high conviction play, so I'm not allocating a lot of money to it. Why do I buy it? Well, if I look on, I guess, like a one year time frame, you know, we see around 70 bucks, 72 bucks. Look at all this support area. That's very clear. You can see all that support. Well, it's someone big in my head is buying, so you basically form a narrative around the reason to buy. In my head, people are buying here. I'm just going to be like, you know what, if this falls, yeah, it'll stink. But I'm literally willing to bet that this company or this stock will stay at this price and, and go up in this kind of cyclical swing. And I'm betting on that with literally money. So it's like, how do you time your entry? Well, if I get it at, you know, at this tip right here, this wick, $67, it's perfect. But that might be a little too low. Maybe like 69, 70 bucks. Oh, that's real good if I can get it for that price. But maybe it never gets there. Maybe I miss it and I get 71, 72 bucks. Well, you just, I am the worst timer of trades and purchases. That's why I don't day trade. I don't, you know, I don't momentum trade. I try to find value and then purchase it and just kind of wait it out. That strategy isn't the best for everybody, but for me it works. And you have to find kind of what works with you and your, you know, mind. So for me, I'm just, I pull the trigger, I'm giving myself a zone, maybe 70, 75, anything in the 72 to like 70 area, that's pretty much a buy for me. If it goes down, maybe, again, I, maybe I put like 25% of my position in, maybe like, eh, you know, a couple shares, whatever. Then if it goes down, maybe I'm like, hmm, maybe I'll add some more, I'll consider it. If it starts going up, I'm like, is this, I might not add because XYZ, and maybe it'll come down, maybe it's in the move, I'd rather be in the move, make a little money, than, you know, be, then when the move happens, I add to my position and it goes down, that's just not, I, I did that a long time ago with Dropbox, oh my gosh, quick example, Dropbox, are we in a one year, yeah, so, literally, oh my god, this is so bad, basically, I bought shared Dropbox, 18 bucks, 18.50, I somehow get lucky off of earnings, right? The thing jumps. Uh, dude, I was up like 20% overnight. That I don't recommend doing earnings plays. It wasn't an earnings play. I was like a value play. I was like, you know, I'm just gonna buy whatever. I think it's a good company. Now I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna add. So I add almost double my position all the way on this upper wick at $21. Then I sold it on this wick at $20, like 40 cents. I ended up losing money on a trade. I could have made 20% because I was greedy and I, and I wanted to make more money. And I thought, looking at it though, it did look like a pretty good buy. It was at a support area. But at the end of the day, like, this is my example, prime recent example of why I'd rather be in a trade in like a quarter position, make 20%, than keep adding on the way up in this momentum. That's just a... Uh, that's, that's, that's why I, that's why I just don't do that anymore. I don't do, if I'm in the trade making money, I gotta, there has to be a serious pullback or I just, you know, cut my, get, cut my gains, you know. So, again, this conversation's gonna be kind of long, but let's go to like AMD. This is my, a recent really good trade. So, one of the things we do, or I do, is look at patterns. I'm noticing, if you look at this, you see we got this movement kind of right here. We have buying along this one standard deviation for a while. Around, I mean, obviously at the time, this one standard deviation wasn't there, but I'm just referring to it now. You can see this buying, is buying, and there's a ceiling. Sellers are putting it down, buyers are buying it up right here. I get in at like 50 bucks, right? Or 55. And because what do I see here? I see a reason to buy. I see people buying. This momentum's going up. Sellers are, you know, pushing it down. But there's a there's a funneling channel of kind of like volatility and you know price action. So I, I decide, you know what? Along 
along this trend line I, I drew. Uh, this trend line was back from literally 2018, basically kind of like the median price. I think at the time this basically was maybe a, well, maybe the mean value. I don't really know. That's why I use these standard deviation zones. They give a really good estimate of, not really good estimate, but it gives more conviction that around these areas are quote unquote cheaper prices, but they're not really, you know, it's just, um, it's how you think about it. So again, I saw, so this line was my, my buy zone. If it was in this zone, I would, or I would want to buy it along this line. Now it did break down. I don't remember if I was in that. Yeah, I think I was. I mean, I could show you guys. So basically, you know, I bought some here and then boom, it shot up like the 8%, 7%. I was like, wow, the next two days it came right back down, but it held this line that gave me really good conviction that, you know what, this move, it's still here to stay, you know, blah, blah, blah. Then, uh, bought some more along this support area that I already deemed prior to, like, the move down. Then I added some more. I actually added more up here. Wow. I don't think I should have done that, but it was very small, adding to the position. And then, yeah, it ripped up. So, my thought process behind buying that, buying there. I bought there because I saw value at about 50 bucks. There was this trend line dating back from 2018. A lot of price action was happening in between that zone. And uh, at the time, if you look to look at weekly candles, a lot of data. Look at one, two, three, all these candles basically, except for two, two weeks. So out of out of three months, only two weeks did it fall below this trend line, and then the next two weeks it held above, and that's when I got in around this area. You gotta just find the value and find reasons and a narrative as to why you're buying it. That's one reason why I love looking at patterns, especially um, like the ascending triangle. I almost only look at it. It's very easy to identify what's happening. So here, let's go on to this ascending triangle pattern. You got up move, you know, you got a rising support and a resistance level, a constant resistance level along this trend line. I mean, there's obviously multiple ways you could buy. You can, if you're buying, I think, for me at least, in these patterns, I buy below about halfway, you know, and you just buy and almost hope for the best. We'll talk about selling in a completely separate video, maybe the next one after this, but I'm buying along this line. Maybe it doesn't hit there. That's the thing. You never know. If I, if I, don't, if I didn't see these two candles here and I saw this move, I'm going to be like, wow, I should probably maybe get it up even up here. However, I don't do that. I'd wait for it to fall. And if it doesn't fall and it shoots up while well, I miss the move, oh well. Me, my low risk, high reward buying zone on these patterns is down at these wicks where this trend line is already being made. And usually about half of that again, because you're never going to time it perfectly. So I would be buying, let's say we didn't have these two candles. It was three days before the breakout. And I saw this move up. I'd wait for it to basically try to fall below here. I guess this trend line isn't really accurate. It would be like, like this. So I'd wait till, actually, I might have never even gotten in this trade. I think, yeah, I might have never even gotten in this trade because of my conviction is about halfway in it. You know, it may never get there. And that's just, it's it's like, when do you want to take the risk on? It's, it's like, when do you want to buy? It's when you're willing and ready to take the risk. And it's very simple. And it might sound simple, but it's complicated, right? For me, I never took this trade. It, it was not a long pattern for me, you know? It's just one of those things that it didn't play out in my head. Space was another trade, let's say. I see all of these are looking like weekly candles. You know, I see these, this uh, falling resistance, and I see a support area around here. You know, a lot of buying right here. So I ended up buying on like this day or this day maybe and it turns out you know what it shot all the way down i lost some money and this was not this was my buying zone this was not so even though i had the right idea like look at the, these wicks weren't there I, my purchase was around this area i think it was literally this candle we'll go on them you know it was right here i had it to the position here because i was like you know what? i don't think it's gonna fall here and look what it did it did fall and i ended up cutting my risk and you know, selling out, but if I just didn't get hasty and waited until it did fall, because that's where I saw value, I could have actually had a good trade, and, we, and if, even if I fell, even if I held it, I would have held this candle because I saw that this candle was holding above a resistance, or sorry, a support that I already outlined previously. Could have made some good money, but instead I lost about maybe 10, 8, not maybe 8%, and if I just bought down here, even if I bought like these candles, you know, maybe 
result of this resistance, you never know, it's just, when are you willing to take the risk, and how can you justify to yourself that you're buying value, again, I don't do momentum trading, I'm very bad at it, very, very bad at it, <laughs> uh, like a workhorse, workhorse, this is an example, workhorse, we bought, or I bought this day, this breakout, I was like, oh, here we go, it's breaking out this, this uh, channel, it broke out, came all the way down, and I got out, I think, like a 4% loss. What happens? Boom, it turns around and shoots up. Look at that move. That's like literally 100%, 80%, maybe 70 I bought a momentum out of a breakout. I don't, I can't do breakout plays. The ascending triangle pattern, it, it is a breakout play, but I don't buy on the breakout. I buy where I see value and I see the pattern forming, and I take that risk at the lower parts of that. Because if it does, like if I bought around here for 15, 14 bucks, right? You see all these wicks, there's buying, there's support here, there's, there's heavy, heavy support. I don't have to, you know, buy at these higher prices in anticipation of it breaking out. Because if it doesn't break out, you know, it could fall down. But then you could be saying, well, what if it's here? And then it doesn't, it falls below. You know, that's definitely possible. However, that's a risk that I'd rather take than a potential, you know, I, I don't want to buy it. It just my experience that's just it just works better i have a better success rate and it just i can um there's so many ways to buy there's so many reasons to buy and decide it's just what are your reasons how can you justify yourself that you know what you're doing is going to be profitable and you never really know right i guess just to recap the trading i try to find patterns where i can say hey there's support levels here, there's people buying, there's a reason that the price action is behaving this certain way. It might not be perfect, but it can give me reasons. I also use standard deviation zones to see roughly, you know, where where the price has been relatively in the past to see where people might be purchasing as like a dip buyer or like, um, I don't know, yeah, basically like a dip buy where people might be finding value and I hitch a ride and I see you know, kind of where it goes, and I manage that risk. We'll see what happens with wind resorts. Um, I'll talk about this in my selling video, but if it falls below like 70 bucks, I'm just gonna get out. It doesn't, it's whatever, take the loss. It might go up or down, but I'm mentally setting that. There's a, there's a lot going on. And, you know, when deciding when to buy. But at the end of the day, as long as, for me, you know, as long as I take a certain percentage of my trade, I'm saying, you know what, right here, I'm just going to buy some because I think XYZ is going to happen, maybe it doesn't, I see what happens with the price, I, I see the volatility, maybe I'm like, oh, it's kind of like, a, it's a little moving too fast, maybe I'm a position size a little too big, you know, I'm fine with the size I have, maybe I'm like, oh, it's moving too slow, I think I have a higher conviction, add more shares, add more position, I very rarely now ever put in 100% of a position size, it's just, like, in a trade, I don't know why I've been doing that, but I've, I make a lot less money, but I'm a lot more accepting of when I take a loss. Like, I'm just like, ah, oh, whatever, like, it's fine, like, just X, Y, Z, I've been even space. I was down 8%, and it was a little more volatile than mo the things I mostly trade. But the loss was not big relative to the por portfolio, because I was just like, I didn't take on that much risk. Even Snapchat was a trade, too, we had. I had I saw value here, it broke out, good, it fell, I just got out because XYZ, and it ripped up, and you know what, it's just how the game's played, you know, things happen, but, you know, buy value, or buy value, or a reason that you want to, you think it's going to appreciate, or, you know, there's obviously still, like, an endless ways, I think I'm just repeating myself, there's so many ways to buy stocks, that's why it's important to find multiple reasons that you find valuable in. And you can justify it to yourself that making this decision is going to be, or might be profitable. And that's pretty much it. You buy when you want to. Anyway, yeah, pretty long video. I hope it wasn't too repetitive because the concept, again, is really simple. But there's so many reasons to, like, you know, other decisions that you could make. So, anyway, I hope you guys found some value in this video. And hopefully I, you know... Hopefully you learned a little inside my head of what decisions and thought processes I make before going into a trade. So anyway, yeah, thank you all for listening and watching, and hope you have a wonderful day or a night, depending on what
when you're watching this, and I'll see you in my next video.